Greetings from Siberia! Last video, I promised to talk a little bit about the problems that we had with doing sheet mulching here in Siberia because we are not inside of a industrial lawn care slash agricultural system. Like in America, again, because you have so much industrialized processes all around you, so much waste, the components that you need to do like a back to Eden style garden, sheet mulching garden are easily, 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 easily accessible to everyone and almost anyone. And I know, I know, like getting a trailer for 60, 70, 100 dollars a day or getting a little rototiller for 100 dollars a day, it's not like like pocket change. I didn't mean to come across like that in the last video. I understand that, you know, you got to work for everything, money doesn't grow on trees, all that. But it's just the amount of 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 <laughs> ease that it affords you when you have those options. Okay, so moving on, uh, in our situation here, we couldn't find the amount of cardboard we need. There were no wood chips just laying around willing to be picked up by anybody who had a pickup or a trailer or like a lot of my friends in the States talk about delivered to them. Um, or, you know, lawn clippings just laying in gargantuan mounds all around anywhere you want, just go pick them up and use them. Like here, not quite so easily had. Um, even old hay, people are using it for different things, so it's kind of harder to come by. So with the farm here, thankfully, with 60 goats, 50 sheep, four horses, and all the other animals that we have, we have a lot of bedding and a lot of manure. So what that means is we make compost, 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 compost. And now here, this is our fourth summer, fourth summer, uh, 17, 18, 18, yeah, fourth summer here on the farm. So our whole system is now really, really working. We've got two giant manure piles up the hill uh, that I'm not gonna show you. And then down the hill, along the side of the hill here, I've got 10 already formed compost piles heading towards the garden. And now what will happen is I will start flipping those compost piles every two to three weeks or so. Um, you can actually do it quite a bit faster than that. It's just, I don't have the time. But you know, once a month, twice a month, we're flipping the, the compost piles down the hill and so they're marching towards the garden. And uh, a compost like this done properly, you need to flip it three or four times before it's actually, you know, you can just mix it into the soil, it becomes really like humus and it's wonderful. But we found that you can use compost that's been, that's been flipped twice as a, la as a ground cover pretty well. It still has a lot of its structure. It's still a lot of the hay that was inside has a lot of structure still. It's not completely broken down and it can go to the ground cover. In my previous video, you might've seen that some of the beds looked like they were naked. Mother Earth is a modest woman. She wants to be covered. And of course, that's an unfortunate thing. Um, but actually, those those grow beds were, uh, those garden beds were covered last year. And and the the, the mulch, because it's not exactly uh, traditional mulch, it really just gets eat up by the garden. The garden absorbs it into the dirt so fast. It's amazing. So this year, we're going to put a, a lot larger of a layer in the spring, and then go back in the fall and put another layer of compost not compost exactly, right? So it's it's not quite broken down all the way to the end. It's kind of mid broke down compost, but but it's already not hot. So put that on the garden and that will be our ground cover. And in the hallways in the garden, again, last video that you saw, we are actually putting down just hay. Now, why don't I just use old hay as mulch? Now you can do that. The problem with old hay is that it's very, it, it's not compressed, right? A lot of times, uh, if you get it out of the old bale, it, it's not compressed. Actually, you guys in the States, if you have old hay and square bales, you get the flakes, that actually might work pretty decently. But with us, the big round bales, you get them, you unroll it, it actually ends up being kind of loose. And what happens is, is you put it over the bed, and some of my uh, subscribers in the, in the Russian YouTube channel have been reporting that they get ants, they get all kinds of slugs, all kinds of different things. <laughs> living under that, that mulch and then eating at their plants and it's just a mess. So how do you deal with that? Um, well, the problem with that is that your mulch needs to be con 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 continuous with the dirt. It needs to actually touch your dirt across the whole, the, the whole uh, area. And what that does is it doesn't leave these pockets of air for things to develop and things to, to go in and live. Um, so, so I'm not saying that ants wouldn't go under a layer of mulch or couldn't, but most likely won't. 
unless they've got these big gaping holes that like gateways going into your your mulch you know you think of it from the ants perspective if they have to dig through you know a pretty solid layer of mulch that's that's um contiguous with the dirt it's not that that inviting so same thing with slugs and, and different things that you you get in the garden so uh that's how we make our situation here uh how is that applicable to you well it's not really applicable to you other than the fact that everyone should have a compost if you do a garden start with a compost pile like literally maybe you don't want to do a garden this year maybe you're like oh a garden would be great but it's late it's already you know mid-may uh we'll do a garden next year start with a compost pile like really and it's really nothing nothing to it the main thing with a compost compost basically comes from four basic four five basic components right so the five basic components of any good composting is a balance between your greens and your browns so your carbon uh, rich material and your nitrogen rich material your browns being carbon rich your greens being nitrogen rich a balance between those um, and you can do that just about by volume like you a lot of people one thing that really rubs me the wrong way is these compost nazis compost snobs were like your compost needs to be this much percent that by this much percent that by add this by add that it's just like no really actually it's a it's a pretty natural system it'll take care of itself more or less get as many browns into the system as you have greens so a layer of browns in the ground layer of greens and then water it yeah to get a, a garden hose put on like a, a mister or a spray nozzle and mist that thing down to where it is moist like when you squeeze it it feels pretty wet like the whole it's wet all the way through but when you squeeze it it's not dribbling water like if you if you've got it to where it's like sponge you're squeezing it and water streaming down your fist like that's really bad just way over watered you want it to be moist but not drenched right so once you got it moist then you go for another layer of browns another layer of greens another layer of browns another layer of greens these compost piles are a little bit small i like uh a six to ten foot wide compost pile by four five six feet tall that's kind of my favorite kind of compost pile and those things once they heat up they will i mean you stick your hand in there and it just like almost burn you it is one of the most amazing things in nature i am so i'm amazed at compost every time you stick your hand in and it's burning and they call it burning in russian but it's, it's heating up it's doing its thing so what those are the two three components yeah greens browns nitrogen carbon um based plants um you know uh vegetation and then you have the water that's the third component um the fourth component is air and that's again the sizing like i don't like to make my uh compost piles much bigger than about six to ten feet i've gone as, as wide as 20 feet um they get kind of oxygen starved at that size so you want to keep them a little bit smaller and not too tall and that means that the air can still get in um to the the compost pile and uh and that's why you need to flip it right so it it works it eats up some most of the air it kind of settles flip it reactivates the compost spray it down reactivates the compost so that's the four components uh nitrogen carbon air and water water and air and the fifth of course is the thing that makes the whole thing work and that's uh the bacteria the bacteria are already present uh usually and by setting up the compost in this particular uh situation allows for a uh, a good environment that will allow those bacteria to really produce and it's actually the heat that you feel is the body action of the bacteria and just the thought that these little tiny invisible things that you can't see are causing all this heat like literally sometimes you can't even put your hand in there it's so hot um i did you know experiments in my previous farm where you're actually pulling heat out of those compost piles uh using like a john Payne system we don't do that here haven't done that yet maybe we'll get back to that but that's a different video a different topic but it's just so amazing like and then you take this stuff that's like waste right like bedding manure or just like leaves grass clipping stuff that's just waste and you turn it into this beautiful humus um that can then go into the dirt and be mixed in with your with your bedding soil and can just just make things beautiful the way we like to do it with the with the uh, garden is like i said we, we don't get it down to like completely broken down we we're just adding kind of halfway broken down compost to the top layers and then it and then it slowly decomposes and feeds the soil every time you water over time and that is kind of this natural system for um feeding your soil the main thing about gardening that you really have to remember is is a good gardener starts by by not trying to grow good plants a good gardener tries to build 
soils. And the sheet mulching system is so cool because it's got that kind of built into the system. So if you start a compost pile and you've already, and you put in your sheet mulch, then what do you do with the compost? Well, you can add, once you've, once it's broken down, once you've flipped it three or four times, you can, you can, you can take that and add it a little bit around the plants so that whenever you water, it feeds it just from the top and it'll slowly drain down through the, the top sheet mulch. Um, or you can get, make a compost tea, and we'll talk about that later, using compost to water it with water. Um, but there, there's, there's no amount of, of really good humus compost that you have um, in, a, in a garden that you can't use. Like, it's so applicable everywhere, and that's really a cool thing to do. So absolutely do that. Now, I know that not everyone has, you know, 240 acres or a big property out in the middle of nowhere where you can just set up 10 compost piles along the side of your garden and not have a problem with it. Most of you, a lot of people are going to be in like suburban, semi-urban sort of neighborhoods. And one of the best ways that you can do that is that set up a, a compost bin. And there's, there's all kinds of photos of this on Google. Maybe I'll put a photo in this video too. Of um, these like three section bins that are made out of, you can make them out of just wood or they make them out of pallets that have got like slat doors on the front. And you fill up the first bin uh, with compost. Uh, with you know with your with your layers you layer cake it and then once it's full then you take a pitchfork flip it over into the second bin and start filling up the first bin again and then once the first bin is again full then you take the second bin flip it into the third bin take the first bin flip it into the second bin begin to fill the first bin first when it's full again you take the third bin flip it outside into a wheelbarrow flip the um the second bin into the third bin first bin into the second bin you get the idea right fill that one up and basically, you have a system that's set up for taking care of any kind of waste that you might have around the house, around the place, um, and feeding that garden. Now, I don't recommend putting kitchen scraps into the compost. Like, uh, that, can, you can do that. There's nothing wrong with that, except for kitchen scraps just don't decompose that well. They're pretty wet and pretty cold as far as their uh, nitrogen carbon makeup they, they just don't they don't go very well unless you have a lot of other nitrogen rich stuff around it and the carbon balance is right it, it it's not going to mess things up it just might sit there and kind of not do much for a while okay so the main thing if you're doing kitchen scraps or manure is having that carbon based something that you can put on top or even like grass clippings they're great because you can put that on top and then it kills any smells and makes it really nice. So that's one thing to do. But the best way to use kitchen scraps is to get chickens. Chickens are the ultimate devourer of all things kitchen scraps. And they actually are really good, like just, just a good foundational pillar, foundational stone for, for setting up food security in your backyard. So I'm a real big believer in chickens. I'm a real believer in meat and I'm a real believer in milk. And if you had to give me a choice of what to start with, like start with the garden or start with a little chicken coop slash goat shed kind of combo thing, of course, just from the calories and from the time and, and energy inputs, um, time and energy inputs compared to the calorie output, you're way ahead to go with animal husbandry before you even start the garden. I'm not saying that you should do that. I'm just saying that that is just the way it works out. Maybe I'll do a video about that some other time. But uh, as far as this goes, just, just absolutely start composting. Don't listen to the compost fascists and the compost Nazis who try to tell you that everything you're doing is wrong. It's really, really simple. Five basic components, carbon, nitrogen, water, air, and the bacteria that are already there. And you can always do something better. There's always things to learn, sure. But never forget that the perfect is often the enemy of the good. Don't let over theorizing, over learning stop you from starting. Start your compost pile today, even if you're going to start your garden somewhere down in the future. Put together one of those little three uh, silo boxes like I talked about, or just do it in a pile like we do it if, you, if your property allows for it. And, uh, and have happiness and joy in your garden and may, <laughs> and may the compost be with you or whatever. So uh, as I say on my Russian YouTube channel, uh, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. And we'll see you next time.